Hello everyone, uh, it's Rich here and I'm doing an overview uh, video so you can understand how this LMS and the TBIM worked uh, for this project. Uh, basically I designed a fictional hospice company and um, devised a four-week uh, modular uh, type of learning plan um, that utilized 4CID theoretical and uh, constructivism theoretical models uh, for implementation. Uh, so this ABC uh, hospice uh, pain management residency is a foundational course and this is the home screen that you will come upon once you join uh, and obviously uh, you will have or would have had to accept uh, and uh, chosen the link to come to this site so you wouldn't be here. Anyways, um, this is a start here learning hub is uh, the first uh, key to the left and that gives, uh, here's me, <laughs> I have an intro uh, video if you're interested in seeing that. But I have embedded uh, lots of multimedia into this LMS uh, for the TBIM. Uh, it's a platform building uh, model based upon 4CID where uh, there's four levels of task learning and uh, one and two are at the bottom. Uh, where the learner is given plenty of resources. Um, all of the uh, learning activities have rules and parameters and um, outcomes are all well defined. Um, at level one and level two, pain uh, control and management is well defined in the literature and this kind of follows that, that pattern. So we are aware of what breakthrough pain is, what um, acute and chronic pain is and also medications that may help or assist with that. Uh, I built this model with um, lots lots of time <laughs> uh, building this thing, but basically it, it should give the learner, a foundational learner, opportunity to, to work through and um, utilize some of that 4CID um, scaffolding uh, technique where the first level is total, uh, you know, uh, resource uh, building and also uh, reiteration of task over and over and uh, uh, utilizing um, the um, instructor as a mentor and as a guide and then uh, or coach as I call it as you go on um, the resources uh, start to become less uh, concrete and then abstract um, and critical thinking skills start to be developed and then the instructor actually starts to back away from the student and allows them to develop the, the schema and scaffolding necessary for um, approaching learning. Uh, so anyways this is my first page and it has the hub of knowledge or starting hub with a course welcome. Uh, one of the things I did um, that may be um, a little different is that um, I did provide areas for a wikis uh, toolkit uh, toolbox I called it and then also an area for a glossary these wikis are open to not only the learner but also the interdisciplinary team who has more experience um, they will be able to log in and also interact with the student uh, as they're learning through their pain residency. Now this is really helpful, integrative, kind of academic, but yet also has its application out into the real world. Um, students, because, because they're novice nurses who are generally of millennial age and who just graduated, uh, really don't have that shift in paradigm yet thinking from a curative uh, pathway to a palliative symptom management pathway. So this is going to be the foundation where you know they'll learn from peers, they'll learn from each other, and they'll teach each other too uh, as they're going along. Um, the first week involves introduction like most coursework does and also a Twitter feed. Um, now the Twitter feed, I'm going to click on it real quick, is a tool I'm going to be using as um, a way to get out announcements, a way of providing education, uh, a way of reinforcing the day or week or you know any type of, of um, theory or anything that we've done. We'll just tweet out there to whoever's in our following in this little small intergroup. 
um, and they will receive the message and they can do with you know with it what they want now platforms are, are kind of difficult but our uh, most private industry private hospice companies have their own uh, cellular network and intranet um, that you're able to access patient information that is secure um, also the phones have some encryption device that is a HIPAA standard uh, standardized so texting and all of that is also covered um, you know like I said in my discussion nothing's airtight but the technology is starting to uh, be used more in the healthcare industry and um, we're getting more real-time uh, application which is awesome and, and advances patient care but at the same time uh, with that immediacy comes a, a higher risk this tweet is uh, tweet account is live so if you want to receive tweets from me I'm going to be tweeting every so often during the week uh, some palliative care and hospice information you can do so um, just just remember that you know no uh, patient information none of that stuff is on there as was aptly uh, pointed out by some of my peers uh, now if you go back into uh, the week one introduction these are all multi-level as they progress of course uh, there are um, let's see here some uh, a section on how to set it up and what a tweet is so if you want to do that the instructions are there for you, you don't have to go searching everywhere uh, and and that should be good I did do an Adobe presenter as I said in my learning plan I wanted to use more of it um, but the compression rate is so high and this course site is you know it's it's used um, and it's free it's free um, for use but there's only 300 megabyte max that you can put on this so kind of I uh, was working overtime to compress a lot of files just to make sure that it fits with what it has a full course uh, so um, anyways you can look at the Adobe presenter and see uh, Adobe presenter if you haven't used is similar to PowerPoint but there's interaction you can actually embed quizzes um, you can use um, the presentations to track and monitor uh, patient or I'm sorry uh, learner interaction uh, there's a bunch of really neat things with it um, but like I said this is the only thing I could use with it because you know the compression size there's plenty of readings if you really want to get to know about palliative care you can use this as a model and read through the readings um, I used my LNEC uh, training uh, certification to uh, outline most of this uh, most of the content and it's covered under copyright so I used it uh, along with uh, ebooks uh, so this is really an economical way uh, in presenting your idea and and getting learning out there to to whoever you know your audience is um, and mine was millennial so I used a lot of web uh, 2.0 type of interaction and you'll see that as we go along okay let's go into um, we got the tweet done let's see week two uh, so week two has readings but it also has embedded video vignette um, which was really kind of a, a, a neat thing that that comes along with the LNEC certification these vignettes really give opportunity for um, uh, the learner to see role playing um, and also to uh, utilize and reflect on the information they have learned uh, in the readings uh, this is linked into the discussion board so I asked specific questions as to the video and how uh, that would work and um, go to conversations which is the, the discussion board so you can see that area it really does have live discussion boards so if you want to play around with that and enter some information uh, remember APA no uh, you can do so and um, I will monitor through the week while you guys are evaluating and respond to you know any questions or whatever you have uh, with that each of these uh, discussion boards have rubrics attached to them uh, so you can uh, either see it manually for the discussion board um, here or you know in the grading process it's there so here's the rubric uh, and it's pretty similar to what you've seen before except 
uh, you know, I'm not as stringent on some of the requirements. It's not an academic, true academic setting. So I just uh, did it to, uh, you know, the level of the student and learning uh, for competency is what we're trying to achieve. All right, so um, we go from an individual nature of pain to multi, and again, dimensional. These are all building on each other. Uh, one of the things that I, if, if you would notice, I hope you would, that through the coursework, there's this constant um, asking the student to reflect and, and develop a sense of, of um, appreciation for what hospice really is and how it differentiates itself from curative process. Uh, some of the things I did was the readings really outlined that kind of process, moving them away from the curative perspective. Uh, but they have to have that at some point, you know, because hospice patients go back and forth, and you'll see that in the simulation model that I have. Um, some of that information is in there. One thing I did use besides uh, uh, Twitter was Snapchat, and it came to me as I was looking at some, you know, Web 2.0 materials, and also, honestly, uh, you know, I have that marching band class, and I am around a lot of younger millennials, they're constantly on this, this Snapchat deal. Uh, if you read here, it'll give you, um, through this paragraph, what Snapchat is. Uh, it's really kind of a strange, um, to me, a foreign um, idea that you would take a picture, send it to a person, and as soon as that person opens it, uh, within 10 seconds, it goes away. Uh, you can send pictures or videos, but anyways, whatever it is, it's going to be 10 seconds and it, and it disappears. Um, it's very um, ephemeral and, and very uh, transient, but it gets a lot of communication um, use. Um, I was reading that Schmidt article, and it talks about 85% of kids, our millennials nowadays, are using things like Snapchat and using Twitter instead of Facebook. And it seems to be the trend uh, around my younger peers and colleagues in the band that they are shy away from Facebook. I don't know the, the psychology and whatnot behind it, but uh, maybe it's, it's too much. Maybe it's uh, too much information that's out there, personal information, or they just don't have time to invest in it. I mean, uh, the average person I hear nowadays is, um, goes on Facebook 10 to 12 times a day. That's that's quite a bit. Uh, anyway, so there's a video here that I thought was really neat on how to set up a Snapchat account and what it is and actually give you some live, not live, but you know, some video and footage of, of what it actually does. And I thought that was really interesting. So I included that to YouTube video. And then also getting started, the site itself, if you want to sign up for Snapchat, I am on Snapchat. I mean, the hospice, uh, fictitious company uh, pain residency is on 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 snapchat and uh, one of the things I thought was hmm ephemeral is short can we use this as an education tool and then I found out there's a function it's called story and what it is is a storyboard that collects all of these snaps for 24 hours um, and you're able to kind of use that and look at that but then at the end of 24 hours they go away so, you know, everyone has their own perspective of what hospice is, what it means to them um, personally. And I kind of wanted that connection and I want that reflection and realization uh, from the learner and also uh, from our, you know, the fictitious staff. I would hope they would do that. But they're participating too. So everyone who's into the, in the interdisciplinary team, uh, which I have, you know, noted up here uh, is a real kind of a, a team scenario here's me and then if you want to watch a video of why I chose nursing there's that you can watch but I also included like <clears throat> um, you know contacts for the doctor who's going to be working with the learner the CNA the uh, chaplain and also the social worker these are all part of the interdisciplinary team who meet who meet each week at the interdisciplinary group to manage the patient's care. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is a lot of information for the student, a lot of resources, again, building on that 4CID where we're all there for the student as a resource in the beginning and then as the student goes on and matures and, and gains more uh, confidence and competency, you know, they begin to, to become their own expert. 
Okay. So um, anyways, now that I have the, the Snapchat um, involved, I'm using that as a point of reference for all of the learners to spend 24 hours taking snaps, videos, pictures, or pictures with words on them that they can write on your screen. And there's, you know, it's an app for iOS and uh, for app iPhone and also Android. But they're able to use that and communicate a message. And what the main purpose is, is to build that sense of community with your peers and also understand that, you know, there's not one perspective on hospice or, or death or dying or any of that. Many, many perspectives and hopefully they learn that, you know, they're part of, of that continuum and that um, they will meet individuals who may not think the way they do about hospice and uh, just, you know, kind of work through that uh, as a means of, of you know, of developing that sense of community and then also to learn more about what hospice really means uh, and, and, and it's different in, in every situation that you, you run into with patients. So that's going to be used. And again, I'm on Snapchat. If you want to do that, that's up to you, but I will snap, snap you back. All right. Um, we have discussion boards on LinkedIn and then quizzes. Uh, all of the quizzes, uh, just to let you know, are live and they're tied into a grading system. So if you want to take any of the quizzes or surveys, pre-tests, post-tests, you're more than welcome to. Um, this is the simulation code entry. We'll get to that when I go into week four. Um, but this is another uh, thing that I developed and coded. And uh, it was a work, uh, huge work. Um, but I think the end result to me was, was a valuable learning process and a valuable tool, a reusable tool that will come in handy whenever I need to, um, you know, if I, if I do teach this residency or pain management at some point. Uh, so you'll see that when we get to it. Uh, week four, uh, part one, just continues off, and it's more of a reading reading half of a week with journal. Uh, if they want to um, blog, there's blogs available in the coursework. They're, they're more than welcome to do so. Uh, and then finally, we get into week four. Uh, and week four, let's see here. I wanted to show you this. They have readings. They have a discussion board after uh, the simulation. Uh, if you're going to use a simulation, do not use this. It'll take you to a, 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 a practice site, and I can't get rid of it, so I'm stuck with it for now. But um, this right here is the link you want to go to. I'm going to click on this link really quickly, and then you can see the start, start screen. Uh, this is a um, what they call active literature storybook site. So it's kind of like the idea of when you were a kid and you got those uh, mystery novels where you say you walk into a den and it gives you two options and you pick one and you go to page so and so and then you maneuver through the book until you make you know your own unique story or so. This is kind of built on that. Um, there's instructions, clear instructions, again the 4CID model and there's rules and there's also resources and then it also tells you the grading system and then that you have unlimited tries and whatnot but you have your choice here of one or two and most of the screens are one or two choices and you um, go through the scenario until you uh, make a choice that that leads to an, an end point um, once you get to the end point there's a five numbered code five digit code you want to remember that code um, because you know this is hosted on a different website and I needed a way to grade this and also to include it into um, the, the course LMS. Uh, so once you're done with that you go here to the test surveys uh, tab and it explains this in the instructions. You go here and you enter uh, into a test screen. You begin the test screen gives you instructions you know only one. Uh, enter one code at a time there's four areas, just one at a time. 
Uh, once you enter it, you will get immediate feedback with how you did, what percentage uh, and what competency level, and also recommendations to improve if you need that. Um, and I'd like to say a special shout out to my mother-in-law, uh, Lois. Uh, she agreed to help me with the project and has uh, uh, allowed her use of voice and, uh, and, and picture. You will see that in the simulation. Uh, I wanted to do video with it, but uh, just didn't work out. Compression problems and coding problems. Again, you, if you're going to work with this stuff, uh, or you want to in the future, give me give me a, a buzz and I'll, I'll let you know what I what I found out. But it, it, it was a whole uh, week, uh, you know, four to three to four hours a day doing the coding for some of this stuff, um, just to make sure it ran smoothly. I had to map out the whole scenarios and links uh, to each other and all of this stuff. Uh, but anyways, so this is a grading system. I couldn't figure out any other way to do it but to insert individual unique codes that will give you feedback and also feed into the grading system. Um, you can't see um, the grading system here but um, because I'm not a student, it doesn't allow me to. But the grade center here, uh, this is the administrator type of uh, area and access. Um, we'll, we'll present a... Um, uh, a grid here and the grids is one of my I, I do have a student account um, uh, maybe I can go to that but anyways it gives all of the grades here and they automatically autofill these once the student takes them and there's time parameters and all of this other stuff um, that are used with that I'm going to log in as a student hopefully let's see let's see if that works can tell I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan. Um, yep, this is the home screen for everybody. A student, you'll see this once you, you get assigned to the course or you ask. And there I am again. But this is what the student will see. So it looks a little bit more, you know, cleaner and, and lighter uh, than the full on administrative screen. Um, so the grade here, let's see if uh, it'll. Yeah, all the grades are listed just like you would find on the regular Blackboard uh, course. Um, and then the reason I said one code is because all those points add up to this for some reason, but the one code will, um, you know, will show if they individually and then will add up to the 100 points that I listed on the syllabus. So, you know, that's about it. We got Twitter, we got uh, Snapchat, we got Adobe Presenter, we got a simulation model, uh, a lot a lot of things that will keep um, this course interactive uh, for those newer novice millennials, nurses that are coming into hospice. Um, and I guess probably that's about it. I'd like to thank everybody and good luck on your projects and uh, let me know if you have any questions or uh, you know looking forward to the critique. Um, and all that, uh, I didn't embed an evaluation. Um, maybe I will uh, just to see how that goes. But I think you know you all are. We're all going to fill out the critiques on on the wikis anyway. So um, that's about it. Um, have have a great rest of the semester and uh, let me know how what you think. All right, thanks.